Hello again guys, today we're going to do something I haven't done in a little while. We're going to review a phone. I've had the Nexus 5X basically since it released. As soon as they were able to ship them out, I got mine. Mine came a little bit later than most other people's because I got the ice color. And actually, speaking of ice, let's go ahead and start off with the design of the device a little bit. I'm going to do this a little differently than I would normally do a review. I'm just going to go at this from my perspective on it, and we'll list off specs sort of as we go. Now in the design, there are three colors of the Nexus 5X available. There's carbon, quartz, and ice, also known as black, white, and blue. In my case, obviously, Obviously, I do have the ice version, and there's a lot of people that told me when I first bought it, why would you go for that one? It's so silly looking. I actually really like it. And if you can't tell, it's very, very similar to the wall color in this room, which might give you an indication as to why I like the color. As far as the rest of it, it is all plastic, which normally would be a bad thing, but it definitely takes me back to the style and the design of the original Nexus 5. The camera hump on the back leaves a little to be desired. I'm not a huge fan of that, but it's not really been a big deal in terms of getting it in and out of the pocket, so I can't complain too much. The processor in this thing is the Snapdragon 808. It's a 1.8 gigahertz hexa-core 64-bit processor, so it's definitely not the top of the heap in terms of performance, but it is definitely pretty close, at least for this generation. Being that it's the 808, it doesn't get blazing hot, but it also doesn't perform quite as fast as the 810 does, so you got kind of a trade-off there. Now when you mix that up with the two gigs of RAM that this comes with, let's just put it this way, it needs more RAM. The 808 itself is a great processor. In the LG G4, it absolutely flies, and there's not been any real issues with this in terms of the processing speed, it's the RAM that's the problem. So once I get a certain number of apps open, the entire phone becomes sluggish. So I have to go through my task manager and actually kill things off in order to regain performance, or even restart the phone sometimes to regain performance. Not a fan of that. 3 gigs or 4 gigs of RAM is an absolute must at this point. In terms of the storage, it has 16 or 32 gigs of available storage with no micro SD card option. I actually opted for the 16 gig variant because, to be entirely honest, I didn't expect that I'd be keeping this. I kind of figured that I would use it for a little while, make a review of it, and then buy the Nexus 6P, because why not? It's the flagship. But I actually really love the design. Let's go back to the beginning again. I like the way it feels in the hand. I like the size. But the 16 gig version, since I purchased that, fills up super, super fast. It actually only has 10 gigs of available storage. I think it's like 10.2 or 10.7. And currently I've got about 3 gigs of available storage because literally every time I shoot a video on this, I immediately come back to my computer and pull that video off. I've got something like a gig worth of photos on here and that's getting kind of tight. So definitely do not go with the 16 gig variant if you intend to do any sort of photos or videos or install any more than just a handful of apps. That can be said across the board. 16 gig should not be an option at this point. As far as the display, it's a 5.2 inch 1080p display. It's an LCD it's not AMOLED, but it also has that ambient display, which you can see there. So it's sort of a weird trade-off. The AMOLED display is what's supposed to allow it to do this without eating a ton of battery, but it doesn't seem to be causing a problem. It doesn't seem to be using a ton of battery doing this. And speaking of that battery, it's a 2700 milliamp hour battery, which when compared to some of the flagships out there, the 3000 and 3300 milliamp hour batteries, 2700 really isn't that small. But over the course of using it, I've experienced some weird drains with it. Like recently especially, every single day I'm having Bluetooth drains. Now part of that was that I was using the Pebble Time and I wasn't absolutely close to the phone all the time with the Pebble Time, so it was constantly polling for it, which really shouldn't be using a huge amount of power since it's Bluetooth low energy and everything. But other than that, when the Bluetooth was not a problem, average regular day-to-day -day basis, I was able to make it through the day as long as I wasn't using it extremely heavily. Usually by the end of the night I would be at 30 or 40 percent. On the days that I was using it heavily, I would sometimes have to charge near the end of the day. And by near the end of the day I'm talking 8, 9, 10 o'clock. Now the good thing about that is it does have USB Type-C with fast charging. It's not Qualcomm Quick Charge, it's not any sort of other proprietary thing, it's actually the USB Type-C standard fast charging, 5 volts at 3 amps, 15 watt charging. That's again sort of a mixed bag, because not all devices do that, not all chargers are compatible with that, meaning you have to be very very picky about what USB Type-C cables you use with this device. Hasn't really been a problem so far. The cables that I have, I've used, I've tested, there's an app called Checker where you can check them, so do make sure to do that if you have the Nexus 5X, the Nexus 6, P, anything that does that fast charge, 5 volt at 3 amps. Now the other really piece of interesting hardware on this, which we'll get to the last one here in just a minute, but the one before that is the fingerprint sensor. Right here in the center of the back, I'm a huge fan of the placement of this and of the sensor itself. Literally, touch the back, it's awake. It's not the absolute fastest thing in the world in terms of waking up, but in terms of just how long you have to touch it, 
It's just a very, very light touch it, it wakes up, and I love that. The only time it is a bit of a bummer is when you lay it down on the table that you can't actually reach it. You'd have to type in your password or put in your pattern or whatever you've got. But the last piece of hardware I really want to focus on is this camera. This is the obvious one. And the front and rear facing camera we'll talk about together. Front facing camera, five megapixels, does pretty decent. It's not amazing, it's not blowing me away, but I've taken some video with it and it, it gets the job done. Both the front and rear facing camera are supposed to be using 1.55 micron bigger pixels. It's supposed to make for better image and it does appear to be doing an excellent job. The rear facing camera is a 12.3 megapixel, although the camera says 12.2, f2.0 aperture capable of 4K video. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to use the 4K video all that much because it does tend to get a little bit warm when doing that. Okay, I'll say it, it gets a little bit hot when you're doing a lot of 4K video and combine that with the limit of two gigs of RAM so that if you have any other apps running and you start trying to do 4K video, you're just kind of gonna lock your phone up. So you're gonna wanna close everything else out. You're gonna wanna make sure the phone is nice and cool and then you can go. You can see some of the sample videos I've done. I've uploaded them here to the channel. I'll put them in as cards and links in the description and everything. This thing can do some absolutely gorgeous 4K footage, especially when you put it on a hardware stabilizer. Again, I did a video about a hardware stabilizer a long time ago. You definitely ought to check that thing out if you're looking for stabilized smartphone footage. Now, in terms of what I would change about this device, what would I want to see different about it? Obviously, first and foremost, more storage. 16 gigs in this day and age, that is a joke. 32 gigs should be the absolute minimum. 64 would be even better. And to go along with that, micro SD card slot. The fact that Google supposedly added in the ability to adopt micro SD cards with Android 6, but you can't actually do it because your Nexus doesn't have that slot, seems kind of silly to me. So I would love to see a micro SD card slot in this Nexus device, but that ain't gonna happen. And as you might have guessed, the other thing I would love to see changed, I would love more RAM in this. Three or four gigs at a minimum. And I should mention, I paid $379 for this out of the door, and they have just recently dropped the price on me. It's now $349 for the 16 gig model and $399 for the 32 gig model, where it was $379 and $429 at launch. So that's a bit of a bummer in terms of where I'm standing. It is only a $30 difference, so it's not massive. But if you've been holding off on picking one up and you're having a trouble deciding between the 5X and the 6P, in my opinion, I definitely would continue to go for the 5X. The performance is adequate for what I do. I've been able to play games on it. I've been able to do all of my day-to-day -day stuff on it. This has been my daily driver for the last couple of months with no real issues other than that RAM limitation. So I will make sure to put links down in the video description to where you can pick one of these up. It is available on Amazon and B&H at the very least, and I do have affiliate links for those, which I'll put down there. And of course, you can always pick it up on the Google Play Store when it's available there. In my case, if I were looking to pick one up, I would probably pick it up at B&H simply because in the place that I'm located at, B&H does not charge us tax, so I would like that. Whereas with Amazon, I get charged tax on everything. So that's a big, big savings for me. So if you have picked up the Nexus 5X, let me know what you think of it down in the comment section below. I am absolutely loving this and looking forward to continuing to use it, especially for that 4K rear face camera. One of the best cameras on the market that you can get. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a thumbs up below this video if you like this video. Subscribe to receive all of my videos when they become available. And we'll see you again next time.